All right, let's talk about one of my favorite things in all of sensation and perception, which is taste and flavor and how those two things are different from one another. Most times when we talk about taste and flavor, we talk about them as if they are the same thing. You know, maybe you say that the taste of a steak is good or the flavor of a steak is good, but those two things are actually very, very different. And we're gonna be exploring that difference today in this video. So what we're gonna be looking at is asking the question, how are taste and smell related, which is gonna help us understand why things taste differently when we're sick. We're gonna be exploring what taste is, what flavor is, and how those two individual independent constructs influence one another so how taste can influence flavor and vice versa okay so you've probably experienced this before where you're sick and you and things either don't taste like anything or they taste strange to you most people when they are sick maybe with the flu or with the cold will say that things like ketchup taste weird um why is that have you ever noticed that before if you have noticed it you probably have drawn the connection that it has something to do with your sense of smell Whenever you're congested, uh, you find that things that you normally like to eat taste a little bit differently. Why is that? It's the same reason why whenever you were a kid and you had to take some medicine that was really yucky, what you would do is you'd plug your nose and you would throw it down, right? You'd plug your nose and then you would drink whatever that medicine was or eat whatever it was and it seemed to be not so bad. You have NyQuil, you know, and you're trying to get rid of it and you, just, and you hate the taste of it, you will plug your nose to drink it. What I want you to do now, and if you have some Skittles on hand or if you have some jelly beans on hand, this will work really well. Uh, so go pause this video, find some Skittles, find some jelly beans, and we can try this together. Okay, I'm going to assume that you actually did that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is take two or more jelly beans, uh, put them in your hand, don't look at what color they are, plug your nose and bite down on that jelly bean. Or plug your nose and bite down on that Skittle. Either one of those is going to work really well. If you have your nose plugged, you're not going to be able to tell what color that jelly bean is or what color that Skittle is. Once you let go of your nose though, it's going to happen very, very quickly. One of the things that I like to do in class is this exact exercise where I give people these jelly beans, have them, you know, uh, plug their nose, bite down on it, and then try to, try to guess what color it was because you actually have a really hard time doing that. And that's because all jelly beans and all Skittles have the same taste. That is, what happens on your tongue is taste. We're eliminating smells right now. We're gonna take olfaction, we're gonna set that aside. What happens on your tongue is going to be taste. And for jelly beans, they all taste sweet. For Skittles, they all taste sweet. They all taste sugary. Once you let go of your nose though, then you're getting the flavor of it. So if you wanna think about what tastes are, think about any variety of the basic taste that we have. Is any, anything that's sweet, anything that's sour, anything that's bitter or salty or savory. If you're talking about things that have like a lemon taste, you're actually referring to the lemon flavor. Uh, so flavor is a little bit different. Flavor involves less of what happens on the tongue and more of what happens with the nose. When you plug your nose and you bite down on something, you don't really get that whole sensation. That's because you're only getting the taste of whatever that flavor, or excuse me, you're only getting the taste of whatever that food is. Once you let go of your nose though, something different happens. What happens is that you start breathing out. And when you're breathing out, different molecules of whatever it is that you're biting on, these particles are going to go up and, and basically go through uh, something called the retronasal pathway. And we have retronasal receptors, which are going to, uh, going to grab onto some of these particles that, are, you're, that you're exhaling. So the kind of, uh, the, the smells or the, the smells that, that, you, uh, that you pick up on retronasally are going to inform us of the flavor. So that's why whenever you have medicine that you really don't like, and you wanna make it not so bad, you plug your nose because that way you're not exhaling all of those particles and getting the flavor of it. You're just getting the taste of it. Now, one of the things about flavor and taste is that uh, taste, we have an area of the brain that's responsible just for detecting or processing tastes, which is the insular cortex, sometimes called the gustatory cortex. For smells, we also have our own independent area for olfaction. But when you have both of those things together, our sense of flavor, which is a marriage of smell and a marriage of taste, putting those things together, you have a new area of the brain that is active only for both of those things together, which is called the orbital frontal cortex. The orbital frontal cortex is gonna be kind of like our flavor hub, where we're gonna be adding in uh, signals that we get from smell, signals that we get from taste, putting those together along with signals from temperature and texture to give us an overall sensation of the, whatever it is that we have in our mouths that we're eating right now. 
Theoretically, if you were to take away this area of the brain, you could be eating on something and, and uh, you would have the taste and the smell different from one another. You wouldn't necessarily bind those things together in your brain to create one coherent object. So how do these things influence one another? Well, it's kind of a one-way street because smells influence taste, but taste doesn't really influence smell. In other words, let's imagine that you have uh, a cup of coffee, and that cup of coffee uh, smells very, very dark. It smells like very dark coffee, and dark coffee is very bitter. So if it smells really dark coffee, and then you drink it, and let's say that milk actually, or, sorry, that coffee actually had lots of milk and had lots of sugar in it, you're actually gonna perceive that as being much more bitter than someone who doesn't have those smells around. So the smell can influence what you perceive to be the taste quite a bit. You can perceive something that smells very acidic to be more sour than it actually is, or something that smells very sweet to taste more sweet than it actually is. But the opposite isn't really true. You can't really bite down on something that is very, very sweet and then post hoc say that that smell is really sweet. Is really sweet. Or you can't really uh, take a, a cup of coffee that smells really sweet and you drink it and it's very, very dark and very, very bitter and then think that, it's, that it also smells dark roast or very bitter in taste. So smell influences taste, but taste doesn't really influence smell. They work hand in hand a lot, but whenever the two don't, are not compatible, it's a one-way street. Okay, so that's the difference between taste and flavor. Um, when, uh, you know, anytime you ha you're at a party and someone talks about, oh, this, you know, this cake tastes very, uh, it tastes, tastes like vanilla. You should always correct them and say, no, it doesn't taste like vanilla. The flavor is vanilla. And I and trust me, you'll make so many friends. Uh, people will hate you if you start doing that. But just for your own knowledge, now you know the difference. Thanks.